nothing that I would change When I look back on every day I count the blessings that became Like when the drought needed the rain so, a very good morning boys and girls and welcome to day two of my Iceland adventure and today is, well, mostly driving. We're going to visit Vestrahorn Mountain on the east coast of the island. Obviously I'm staying outside of Reykjavik on the west coast, so I've got a 450 kilometre drive there and a 450 kilometre drive back. So roughly 200 kilometers in just left a town of i'm gonna call it vic or it could be Wick, i'm not sure how you pronounce it fill the car up just so there's enough fuel to get back there if needs be on the road now middle of absolute nowhere there's nothing about so i thought it'd be a good idea just to fill up so we don't get stranded but yeah, this is starting to look like how I would imagine Iceland to be now. Just cold, Icelandic, dark sand, snow-capped mountains everywhere. It's, it's very much what I imagined Iceland to be. I also didn't expect Vestrahorn to be so far away. It's such a drive, but we keep going. It's now 20 to 1 in the afternoon. Sunsets in five hours. We're gonna have around an hour and a half before sunset and maybe a little bit of time afterwards. So plenty of time left in the day. I'm just itching to get there now. Cue the travelling montage. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, this is a place that I have always wanted to visit. I cannot tell you how long I've wanted to come here for and to see it in person. It is just everything I hoped it would be. And to also have all of Vestrahorn visible with no cloud above it, it's just added so much to it. One of my biggest fears where I get here, it'd be foggy or the top of the mountain would be covered in low cloud, but it's not. It is just the most incredible place. In fact, the drive over, has also been pretty incredible. A couple of little stop-offs, one to take a panoramic photograph of a mountain next to the glacier. I believe the mountain does have a name, but I can't remember off the top of my head what that may be. And then driving along the road, I managed to come across a lagoon full of icebergs now. I think it's the, is it the Diamond Beach? I managed to stop off and just take a little photograph of some icebergs as well, which was awesome on the way. It's just one of them unexpected little things. This drive over has just offered so much. This black sand is incredibly soft. It's, it's a really weird place. This, I'm sorry to say, has now just put the dampeners on just about every single beach I'm ever going to visit again in East Yorkshire and North Yorkshire. It's not going to have black sand and it's certainly not going to have a mountain at the back of it. Let's get a little bit closer. I'm going to say we'll get a little bit closer, use the wide angle lens on a little lake or whatever it is in front of the mountain and then move off towards the beach for the North Atlantic. We've got a little bit of time, there's no need to rush. I just want to enjoy my time here, like I say, a place that I've always wanted to visit. So, finally made it. I've been driving all day, but welcome to the famous Black Sand Beach in front of Vestrahorn mountain now i'm a little bit ways back from the mountain to begin with i'm going to take a really wide angle shot just using a little bit of a vantage point looking down onto the black sand with all these little clumps of grass as a foreground interest that's going to be the first photograph we're going to take and i'll go for a bit of a walk around the beach and just see what we can get a little bit closer up as the sun sets we're about an hour away from sunset so a golden hour is underway now so hopefully we'll get some really nice light in the next hour or so so this is the first composition that I've gone for. So you can see I'm still on a bit of a mound of grass. And we're getting just the very edge of that in the bottom of the frame, leading up to some more of these mounds of grass in the mid-ground. And we've got Vestrahorn Mountain as the foreground. As, sorry, it's the background itself, but there's just a little bit of cloud and a little bit of a haze starting to creep over, which may catch some of the uh, dying light very, very shortly. So let's go ahead and we'll take this first. 
photograph. So we're f5.6. It's giving me a 50th, sorry, a 40th of a second at ISO 200, which is the base ISO on this camera. I've pretty much focused at infinity, but this lens, this Venus Lauer lens, is so wide angle, you're going to get most of the photograph in focus using it anyway. So going ahead, there's that first photograph taken. I will show it to you and we'll see what else we can find. All right, so there's the first photograph taken. And now I think I want to get more towards the water and see if we can't do a long exposure. The sun's really dropping down towards the horizon now, so a long exposure photography may be a good idea at this point. Just behind us, there is a very extreme edge of Vestrahorn. And down at the beach, there is a lot of chop in the North Atlantic. So let's head down the beach and see what we can do. All right, so I've come for a little bit of a walk, a little bit further down the beach. And I wanted to find a reflections photograph of the mountain which i'm able to do as a little puddle behind me using the ultra wide angle lens i'm able to get the reflection in the puddle and the mountain in the background so i'll pull you over i'll show you what we're doing and we'll take the photograph all right so this is the photograph on the back of the camera so we're at f5.6 giving us a 25th of a second at iso 200 so you can see on the back of the camera i've got the reflection of the mountain tops there the mountain itself and just all of the cloud kicking off behind it the sun's kind of been stifled a little bit by some low cloud on the horizon in the opposite direction, which is a shame because if that wasn't there, it could have lit up this mountain a little bit more. But there is some light and shadow and highlight detail kicking around on there. So here we go. 25th of a second, f5.6, ISO 200. And I've taken a three shot bracket just in case when we get home. Here's that photograph. So I'm really hoping that that reflections photograph turned out how I wanted to do. All of the photographs that I'm taking here, they're all three shot brackets. It's a once in a lifetime spot. I don't want to mess them up. So I figured three shot brackets, three stops either side, get all of that detail in there. If we can use the middle exposure, then brilliant. If we have to photo merge, then so be it. But I just want to get all of that information in the photographs if I possibly can. So now was the time to head towards the North Atlantic, but I'm really not too sure what kind of photograph that we're going to get. Light's kicking down a bit now, what time is it? We're around half an hour out from sunset now, so I think we'll make a beeline towards the coast. I've got the photographs that I came and traveled all this way to get, so I'm really happy that they're in the bag. So anything else and extra that we'll get, that's a bit of a bonus. All right, so for this photograph, I'm going to do something completely out of what I would usually do for a photograph like this. And I'm going to leave a polarizer on and hopefully get a reflection of the mountain in all this wet black sand. I think I'm going to do it as a long exposure. I want to get some movement in the clouds. So hopefully we can get maybe a minute's worth of exposure time on that. But hopefully we get a nice reflection with some white sea foam as well, which should really add to this photograph. So let's get the camera set up with a filter on the front of it and do a little bit of a long exposure. I'm undecided whether or not to use the 12 to 40 or the 6 millimeter, so I'm going to have a bit of a play around first and just see which lens looks the best. All right, so as you can see, the tide is ever so slightly um, washing over this beach. So I've put a polarizing filter on, which is not what I said I was going to do. And I've also put a six stop filter on, which is also wasn't the plan. So I am now wet. The water is just surrounding me, but there's still a bit of a reflection in this water so i'm going to try and time this as the water is retreating which is giving me a six second exposure time and hopefully we'll get the long exposure look but also the reflection of the mountain which we certainly have oh i really like that the grass the sorry the the black sand is just like glass it is incredible i think we may need to open the aperture up a little bit here that first test shot was 
down at F8. It's just giving me too long of an exposure time. Let's try and get down to maybe two seconds, F4.5. I saw 200, so we're down at two seconds. So now it's the case of just waiting for the next little bit of water to come in, which it seems to be. So we'll try that again. Let's just wait, see how this turns out. You can see the water's coming in. Or oh, going back out. Oh, that wave just didn't come. Just didn't come far enough in, did it? You can see it is just like glass. That is absolutely beautiful. All right. So I think we may be about to get wet, which is a good thing. Come on. You can do it. You can get in. You can come. All right. Let's start the exposure going as all well. this is rushing across. Take another one just in case that one's a bit rubbish. Oh, we're getting some really nice ones. Stuff the reflection. The long exposure here looks amazing. I'm so excited, but also so wet. Right, let's stop down a little bit. Let's go back down towards F7.1. Four seconds. Zolens is just washing out. And just see what sort of streaks it creates. Oh, I love that. So thank you very much for watching this probably quite a short video from Vesterhorn, but this is an absolute bucket list location for me as a photographer. And like I said, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. I'm going to cut the recording out now. I'm going to put the recording and video equipment away and I'm just going to walk around with the camera and take some photographs. So anything else that I do manage to grab, there'll be a little bit of a slideshow coming up. But I really just want to focus on the photographs. Like I said, this is a, a once in a lifetime place for me to visit. And I've done the video side of it. I've done my YouTube inside of things. And for now, I think it's time just to take a few more photographs of that spectacular mountain behind me with the Black Sand Beach. So any more photos, there's going to be a bit of a slideshow. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please do give it a thumbs up and a like. It really does help the video and it brings new viewers to see my content. And if you liked it a little bit more than that, there is a subscribe button below me. You can always press that and you'll see more nonsense from myself every single week. So until part three, I'm going to love you and leave you and say peace and goodbye.